Hello, my dear friends. How are you doing? Hope you are having an amazing day and not having to deal with drama. Ready for new stories I have for you today? Let's go to the first one. And don't forget to listen to the end of the story, guys, to hear my insights. Enjoy the stories. And don't forget to like and subscribe. And of course, don't forget to leave a comment. I, 17 male, have a complicated blended family history that I should try to explain. Dad and Mom had me and my sister Kaylee, 15 female. Mom died when Kaylee was 3 and I was 5. Dad was never that close to his family, but Mom was close to hers, and Kaylee and I were close to them too. Dad was not. My dad's wife had her oldest, 13, before she got married for the first time. With her ex-husband, she had two kids, 10 and 9. During her first marriage, she and her husband took in his nieces, 12 and 8. Her ex-husband and his whole family got arrested, and her nieces didn't know their father. So she kept them and raised them with my dad. She also took custody of her nephew, seven, while she and my dad were dating. I could be a little off on the timeline. This stuff happened, but of course I didn't know her during most of it. Now they have a four and three-year-old together, and they've been married for six years. They only dated for 14 or 15 months, and she started dating dad while she was in the middle of her divorce. Of all the kids in our house, my sister and I are the only ones with extended family in our lives. Our maternal grandparents and aunts, uncles, and cousins. Dad's parents didn't want anything to do with kids that weren't blood, so Dad finally stopped all contact with his family, though his family never cared much for Kaylee or me either. His wife's parents are dead, and her brother isn't around for his son, and the mother of his son and her family aren't involved. Her ex-husband's family are all still in prison, and the father of his nieces are still unknown. My maternal family don't want to be involved in the others, just Kaylee and me, which annoys my dad and annoys his wife, and the kids get upset because they want to have more people too. They want to go to barbecues and grandparents' sleepovers and cousin sleepovers. But just Kaylee and I get that. It's become such a huge deal that my dad and his wife tried to tell Kaylee and me we couldn't see our family as much. And they tried to take advantage of virus by making us all do family things together in the hope we wouldn't tolerate the other kids being excluded if we loved them more than we loved our maternal side. It didn't work. Dad told Kaylee and me recently he was putting his foot down and we were not to talk to our family anymore. He said they were a bad influence and taught us to close off our hearts to our family. He said he never should have let things continue this long. He said it wasn't fair to the other kids and what they're going through. I asked him why his stepkids and his younger bio kids are more important to him than Kaylee and me. Why is their happiness and their wants more important? Dad told me I wasn't being logical or fair to him. I told him we didn't know them cutting off our family for them. I told him he should be putting us first too, that we're still his and we don't have another parent to advocate for us. He told me I should show more compassion and love for my siblings, not just Kaylee. Am I the a-hole? OP's father is completely in the wrong here. OP's dad is going to lose OP and his sister once they both are 18 if he's not careful. OP should not let him guilt OP. OP made no choice. OP receives love from his mother's family, and that's a good thing. In no way should OP reject him, even if he tells OP it's unfair for OP's siblings. What's unfair is that he didn't keep a loving family around his children. He should have kept his ego for himself and try harder to keep a family dynamic around the children. And yes, OP is right asking him the question. Why are they more important than OP and his sister? Also, OP should consider telling his father's demands to his grandparents. Only then he might cut loose. And now let's hear the community's opinion. Not the a-hole. Your dad is encouraging you to destroy the last remaining link you have to your mother, just to appease his new wife and the other kids. And that's not fair. Your mom's side are the people who can tell you about her in ways that your dad can't, and probably would in any way from the sound of it, and give you a sense of history. I imagine it would be heartbreaking for them to lose you and Kaylee after already losing their own daughter. It sucks that your step and bio siblings don't have extended family, but that's not on you. Don't set yourself on fire to keep others warm. Not the a-hole. Your dad is being unreasonable and unfair. It's understandable that he wants a united family, but he can't force you to prioritize his other children over your own grandparents and extended family. You and your sister have a right to maintain your relationships with your mother's side of the family and it's not your responsibility to compensate for the other kid's lack of extended family. Not the a-hole. I don't know where you live, but soon you will be 18 and your sister 16. Talk to your maternal family and see if they are willing to take you in. 
Legally, they won't have any say until you've turned 18 years old, and your sister will be able to have her say in court if necessary. I think I lost count, but you're like 10 kids. I don't think he can do much legally if it goes to court for your sister. I wouldn't suggest leaving her there alone for two more years. I, 21 female, am an affair baby. My dad cheated on his ex-wife with my mom. They were married for 10 plus years, and two years into the marriage, my dad quit his job to start a business while his wife became the sole majority breadwinner. Eventually, my dad's business became very successful, and he was ranking out hundreds of thousands of dollars as personal profit. Around that time, he became involved with my mom. My dad wanted to leave his wife for my mom, but knew that his ex-wife could clean him out in a divorce, since the money she earned was used to help fund his business ventures. She co-signed business loans, and even did occasional labor on her off time for the business. My mom didn't like my dad's reluctance to leave his ex, and eventually broke off the relationship not knowing that she was already pregnant with me. When she found out, the plan was always to give me up for adoption, so she felt the need to tell my dad, but on the day that I was actually born, she changed her mind and decided to keep me. I was around two years old when my parents re-established contact, and by that time, my dad had convinced his ex-wife to sign a post-nuptial agreement with an infidelity clause that would be heavily in the hurt party's favor if ever proven. Up until that time, my mom kept saying that I was the result of a one-night stand, but when she and my dad decided to get back together, after my dad divorced his ex, she finally told him about my paternity, and he wasn't happy and told my mom about the infidelity clause. They decided that it would be best to keep everything between themselves in the hopes that his ex wouldn't find out. I didn't even know for the majority of my life and just thought that my dad was my stepdad. Because I grew up not knowing who my bio dad was, I wanted to do the ancestry testing and my mom and dad were vehemently against it. Knowing that I was still going to do it, they decided to tell me the truth and I got mad and did it anyway, thinking that they were lying. I ended up matching with several members of my dad's family and everything blew up. The ex-wife has now reached out to them through lawyers about petitioning the courts to renegotiate the terms of the divorce settlement, as I am living proof of infidelity. If the courts are granted the right to renegotiate, then my dad's ex may be able to take it all, if not the lion's share of it all, and a lot of people on my mom's side of the family lean on my dad and his finances for support. Am I the a-hole? Edit. Because I'm seeing this, I wanted to clarify. My dad didn't know about my existence at the time he and his ex signed the agreement. At the time, my mom was in a relationship with someone else, the son of a family friend, so they were both discreet and it looks like I'm the only actual proof that there was any cheating. So far, only some cousins on my mom's side and her siblings are upset because up until now, my dad was in a financial position to pay for everyone's college expenses, all out of pocket. That has now been put on hold and they may end up having to take out loans. While my dad is upset about possibly going back to court over this divorce, he's yet to direct any of his anger towards me. Yes, my dad has children with his ex. I matched with one of them and they told their mom, so that's how she knows. And before you ask, I don't really have a relationship with them. They never really took to my mom, but they treat both her and me with polite indifference. I don't see us becoming closer after this revelation though. Not the a-hole. The name of it is Consequences and Their Actions. P.S. Is your father stupid? Making an infidelity clause after he cheated? I believe that he is. I read that and did a double take. He even knew that he had a daughter by another woman. Even if she did put OP up for adoption, the past adoptees almost always locate their birth parents, and it is so much easier to do now. First, he cheated, had a baby, then signed a post-nuptial with an infidelity clause, and then he went back to the woman that he cheated with. He needs a crayon sharpener for sure, cause he sure isn't the sharpest in the box. You're the victim here, the one person who had nothing to do with creating a circumstance where revealing the truth, your existence, could cost your father money. You were lied to for most of your life, and now that there are tools to help you find the truth, it was natural for you to take advantage of them. Then the truth came out, not the a-hole. Not the a-hole. By the time he made and signed that infidelity clause contract, he knew darn well he had cheated already. He quite literally set himself up to fail. Deserves whatever happens to him. As for your mom's side of the family, they shouldn't be relying on him, and that's on her for fooling around with a married man in the first place. I, 45 female, 
divorced my ex-husband when my daughter, Kelly, 21 female, was around 12, after I caught him cheating for the second time. Literally everyone was against it, and I knew the in-laws wouldn't like it because they're traditional conservatives who didn't want to deal with the public scandal. But it was hurtful to me that my own family was trying to pressure me to stay in the marriage in order to not lose access to the money and perks my ex had provided. Examples While we were married, my ex helped my brother get a nice job with a high salary and nice benefits, paid off my sister's credit card debts, and bought my parents really lavish gifts. The first time I caught him cheating, I won it out back then, but my family convinced me to forgive him and that I owed it to Kelly to fight for her, to have the stability of a two-parent household. My daughter was only a few weeks old at the time, and I was in a very vulnerable state at the time. So I agreed, and felt so stupid when my ex did it again. But this time, there wasn't a, you weren't performing your wifely duty since you got pregnant excuse anymore. This time, I wasn't going to be deterred and continued with the divorce. In truth, I wanted to keep Kelly out of this as much as possible, but my in-laws and my own parents poisoned her against me by painting me as a hypocrite for telling her how important forgiveness is, but that I wasn't willing to forgive Daddy, even when he was really sorry. I was distraught. I honestly don't think I would have made it through it if it weren't for my best friend, Tina, who was my rock. In the end, I got a nice settlement and some alimony, but didn't get custody. I tried my hardest to still be in Kelly's life, but by the time she was a teen, she was fully convinced that I was the bad guy and told the court she didn't want to see me anymore. I was heartbroken, but kept reaching out. During that time, I also managed to go back to school. I was studying accounting and managed to get a high-paying job of my own and have a nice life for myself. The same can't be said for my ex, who was sued by a former employee and fired by his company. Because he was so embarrassed, my ex burned through his savings trying to keep up his lifestyle, which included Kelly's college fund. Suddenly, she wanted contact again. And I won't lie and say that I wasn't hurt by the idea of her only wanting contact for my money and agreed to pay for her to go to grad school on the condition that she sign an agreement that she won't contest my will, where I'm leaving most of what I own to Tina's daughter, Laura, 18 female. The few relatives that I'm still on good terms with think that this will damaged any chance of rebuilding a relationship with Kelly and that I should split everything equally. However, I don't want to have that type of relationship with Kelly that I feel like I have to pay for. Am I the a-hole? Edit. I didn't get custody, but I did get visitation. And when Kelly was 14 or 15, she told the courts she didn't want to visit me anymore. My ex came for money and had a good income, which meant he had better lawyers and the aid of my brother and parents during the divorce. Not too long ago after the divorce, my brother lost his job. I'm not sure what happened, and I never cared to ask. I'm no contact with my brother and very low contact with my parents and sister. Tina is my documented point of contact should there ever be a situation where I can't make legal decisions for myself, and vice versa. Alimony is not child support, so that's why I was able to get it. Not the a-hole. Your daughter has always been against you because of your family. And now the moment when things aren't looking good, she wants contact. Ignore her. And your family basically wanted you to stay because they wanted his money. Not the a-hole. But there's a lot to unpack here. Does Kelly know what exactly happened? Is her missing college funds the only reason why she reached out to you? Or is it her being an adult and finally realizing fully what's going on? At the time, she didn't. But once the divorce was over, I did explain the situation. But she didn't believe me. If you're asking me if my daughter has come out right and said that all she wants me for is my money, then no. However, looking at the timing of her wanting to actually speak to me again, and seeing how the majority of our, limited, talks is about her schooling and her financial concerns. I am inclined to believe so. I honestly would feel a bit more better if she did sign the agreement and continued speaking to me as proof that I'm not just a checkbook to her. Not the a-hole, but I won't label your daughter as an a-hole either, because she has been brainwashed most of her life and this is not her fault. Wills can be changed, relationships too. What about setting a weekly or monthly breakfast or lunch to get reacquainted and leave her a chance to win your trust back and hear your side of the story? Your ex and his family, though. Wow. I've been with him for five years. We're both 32. He makes good money in his business, but he's hella irresponsible. He needed to bill a client by the 18th in order to receive a nice big check this week. 
He did not bill his client. He will not be paid until after New Year's now. Today he started complaining to me that he barely has any money left in his account. Again, he's often irresponsible with money and budgeting. He asked me several times to please borrow money from my sister or my dad to lend him until he gets paid in January. I was on the fence about this. I know neither my sister nor my dad will be thrilled to lend him several thousand dollars last minute, honestly, and I feel like a jerk asking them. But he told me he needs $1,500 to buy his daughter, 15, a new phone. She dropped hers two months ago and the screen cracked. I argued with him that his daughter, who I really adore by the way, does not need an expensive phone, especially not right now. If he wants to give her an IOU, that would be fine and he can buy her one in January. I suggested getting her the phone case and putting an IOU in there along with the date he will be able to purchase it for her. He said absolutely not. That's not fair to her. My phone was worth $600, and it works great. I feel it's excessive to buy such an expensive gift for a teenager when he can't afford it himself right now. And it's not like she won't be getting plenty of presents. Her mom and stepdad are also well off, and they will have gifts for her. My partner and his ex haven't been together in 13 years, so it's not like there's any contest or emotion left there. My partner often spoils his daughter. Trips, lots of electronics, expensive clothes, so it's not like she's hard done by at all. She's a sweet kid and would easily understand that his payment was late and he needs to wait to get her the phone. He said he already asked his family and nobody can lend him money and he'll pay my family back with interest. Please tell me the truth. Am I the a-hole for not wanting to borrow money from my family for this? Edit. Just want to add that his daughter is not the problem at all. She's not irresponsible. Her phone dropped and the screen cracked and she kept using it. Of course, it cracked more. She's not demanding a new phone, but he wants to provide a new phone for her for a Christmas gift. He's making me feel like an a-hole for A, not reminding him that he needed to bill his client. I disagree that this is my fault, but he feels he had so much on his plate and I should have reminded him since I'm not as busy. And B, I should be a good stepmom and help make this gift happen. He says he would do it for me, and that's true, he would. Not the a-hole. He needs to learn how to be financially responsible. Do not give in. This is on him that he messed up. Also, what kid needs an expensive phone? Not the a-hole. Your partner is so financially irresponsible that despite making a good living, he is not able to purchase something using a credit card. His uncle, rightly so, refuses to lend him any money because of how long it takes your partner to pay his uncle back. Instead of learning from this, he is asking you and your family to take responsibility for his bad decisions. Do not put your family in that position. Do not lend him money. And ask yourself, is this really someone you want to build a life with? Not the a-hole. This is the point where I'd be seriously asking myself what kind of future could I possibly have with someone so financially irresponsible that they want my family to fund their money mismanagement. Tell him it's not going to happen and he can consider this a harsh lesson in taking responsibility. You are not his mother and refuse to be one. Then, go and ask yourself if this guy you have in front of you right now is the one you thought you'd signed up to be with. Me and my wife have been living together for five years. I am 30 years old and she is 29. My wife's best friend and only friend is her cousin and she really enjoys her time with her. But for many months, I've noticed that her cousin doesn't actually like my wife, but is using her for her needs. I told my wife, but she said she's always been like that and not to worry about it. I was still convinced that she still hates me and my wife, but I ignored it. Two weeks ago, my wife and her cousin got in a contest where the winner gets a drawing tablet. Yeah, it was a drawing contest. One day before the contest's deadline, I asked my wife to show me the drawing, and she said she didn't do it. I spent around 10 minutes asking her what happened till she finally broke down and told me her cousin's been insulting her, telling her if she wins she will never talk to her again and that she really needed this drawing tablet. I spent the night calming my wife down and cheering her up until she felt better, but she said she doesn't want to participate anymore. I took the next day off to go out with my wife outside to get her to forget what happened. Yesterday, the results were announced. Surprisingly, her cousin won. The whole day yesterday and morning today, her cousin spent it talking to my wife about how she is better than her at drawing and rubbing the prize in her face, almost like how an eight-year-old would act. But the thing that my wife didn't know, when she told me yesterday her cousin won, 
Today after work, I bought her a drawing tablet as a gift that is better than what her cousin got and told her to rub it in her cousin's face. And she did that. Her whole family, sadly including my wife's parents and siblings, called me and my wife and called us a-holes and my wife doesn't deserve the gift and I shouldn't have given this to her because she didn't win the contest. My wife started crying again, understandably, because even her parents aren't supporting her. She is sleeping right now, and I can't sleep because of what happened today. I just wanted to make my wife happy. Am I the a-hole? Not the a-hole. I'll give you a piece of folksy advice from the deep north woods of Minnesota where I'm from. Tell her family to watch their own bobbers. Not the a-hole. Your wife's cousin is a jerk and a half, and I feel so sorry for your wife. Her cousin is a small, resentful, selfish person who clearly wants everything to be about her. Not the a-hole. I'm guessing your wife was the family scapegoat. That's why she's friends with someone who was so cruel to her and normalized it. Only friend, too. If her cousin can't take it for one instance, she shouldn't be dishing it out at all. Is there anyone in your friend group your wife could spend time with in a healthier friendship?